So I want to talk about the fate of the universe. We've talked about its entire history so far, but what about the future? Um, in order to understand what happens in the universe, we need to know what's in it. Because as we mentioned, our models of universe expansion take into account the density of the universe. And so we need to know what it's made of. What is that density? Um, based on our best measurements so far, um, it appears that only 5% of the universe is made of ordinary matter. Uh, and the rest of it is pure mystery. So about 68% of it is dark energy and 27% is dark matter. So we've already talked about dark matter many times before, but we have barely talked about dark energy. So let's get into it. So let me ask you about some of these things. Um, which kinds of stuff do we need to know to determine if the universe is going to expand forever? So based on those models that we learned about last time. All right. Yep, we need to know about how much matter there is, how much dark matter there is, and how much dark energy there is. So all of this factors into our measurement of density. Um, so I'm gonna come back to this idea of the expansion models that we talked about last time. You've seen this exact slide before. So we talked about these four different models and how they um, correspond to the different densities and which of them do and don't contain dark energy. Um, but I think I could do a, a little bit better of a job here. And in order to know which of these curves our universe is, we have to measure that density somehow. So when we actually measure the density using the cosmic microwave background radiation, again, this is review, our best measurements from the Planck satellite show that we live in a flat critical density universe. So when we go back to our models again, we need to incorporate that critical density. Um, we also, I don't know why there are animations on this. We also know that our universe is accelerating in its expansion, right? So we know that either gravity isn't the only force that we have to deal with. Um, the idea of an accelerating universe is like, instead of throwing a ball up in the air and it comes back down, you throw a ball up in the air and accelerates faster and faster away from the earth. So accelerating universes are odd. Remember the other interpretation for why we might see a lot of um, supernovae, you know, at high red shifts that indicate that we have an accelerating universe, they could behave differently in the past. So maybe we don't know enough about the physics of type 1a supernovae. We don't think that that's most likely at this point. But if they did behave differently in the past than they do today, that would violate the cosmological principle. And so it would kind of blow all of our assumptions. So that would be a problem too. Okay, so we've got these two ideas. We know that our universe is a flat critical density universe, but it's also accelerating in its expansion. And those don't seem to go together based on what we talked about last time with the universe models, right? Because we said um, only the only curve four is accelerating, but we live in a flat universe. So we thought that we were on universe number three. That's not quite true. And the reason is because um, this is not um, true that number four is not below critical density. So this, this was wrong in our discussion on Monday. Um, Number four is a critical density universe plus dark energy. So sorry for the confusion about this, but let me try to explain what's going on here. Um, curve four is the only one out of these four that contains dark energy. All the rest of them are only um, regular matter and dark matter and radiation. And so remember dark energy is just a placeholder for whatever it is that's beating gravity, right? That's causing our universe not to behave as, as curve three, as a critical density universe. Because without dark energy, we would say, okay, we have a critical density based on the CMB, so we should be on curve three. But actually we measure that we're accelerating in our expansion, so curve three cannot be our universe. Okay, the whole confusion behind this topic comes from the fact that our two textbooks, the ones that I'm familiar with and the, and the OpenStax textbook, they don't completely align. And I think the OpenStax discussion of this particular plot doesn't have a good explanation for their placement of curve four. 
whereas the textbook that I have does have a very good discussion of curve four. So I'm gonna move forward with this discussion, if that's okay with you. Um, all right, so the big difference here is that in the OpenStax textbook, for reasons unknown to me, curve four hits the X, the time axis here way before our dashed line. Remember this dashed line was just constant expansion in an empty zero density universe. But in the Chasson and McMillan book, curve four hits right around the same point as that dashed line. Okay, this is, this is a really important point. And the OpenStax book doesn't explain why they have this gap. So without explanation, I can't really trust that. All right, so moving forward, using our new models here. These are the same models. I've just scooted curve four over. That's all that's happened. So now we're gonna try to answer the question, how old is the universe? And try to use the age, so the places where these curves hit the x-axis, the time axis. We're gonna use these to understand which one of these curves could be most likely based on other corroborating evidence, all right? So some of that corroborating evidence is that we know that the first quasars are about 13 billion years old. And we know that the first globular clusters are about 10 to 12 billion years old. And these, especially the globular clusters are really critical because we can measure their age independent of their distance. So we, we can measure their stellar compositions and then based on what we know about stellar evolution, um, which is physics that we understand in grid, extremely good detail, um, then we can get the globular cluster ages. Okay, so we know the globular clusters are 10 to 12 billion years old. So no universe can be younger than that. It wouldn't be consistent, right? And um, what we do know is that with the um, universe model in curve two, the universe of curve two would be between nine and 14 billion years old. So it might be old enough, but it might not be. Curve three is younger. It's closer to the present day than curve two. And so is curve one, which means that all of these universes would be too young. They would be inconsistent with globular clusters. The universe would be younger than the globular clusters. That would be no good, right? So all of these predictions without dark energy don't allow enough time for globular clusters to form. So none of those could be our universe. So what we know based on this is that we're not gonna have a big crunch like universe one, right? We're not going to expand slowly and slowly to some finite size, which is curve three, but instead it seems like we're going to expand forever actually faster and faster. So that's curve four. This is the one that is most consistent with um, our dark energy models. So this is consistent with how old are the globular clusters. It's consistent with the idea that the expansion is accelerating today. And it's also consistent with the idea that we have a critical density universe. Um, I believe that the reason that this curve bends kind of like curve two bends at early times is because of the critical density. And then the reason that it goes like this at late times, that it shoots upward away from the dashed line, that's because of um, acceleration from dark energy. And that's why we call the present era of the universe the dark energy era, because it is only now that dark energy's influence is starting to make itself known and that the expansion is accelerating in measurable ways. Maybe it's just that we're measuring now, but um, this, this is when dark energy starts to be a bigger influence than gravity. Okay, there are a few homework questions that will hopefully try to get at this idea a little bit more step-by-step. -step. So hopefully you'll give that a go and then come to the help session tomorrow if you wanna talk about this in more detail. All right. So there's a crash course video that's linked on Moodle that goes through all the consequences for the fate of our universe under this model. So if you're curious about what will happen, watch that video. It's awesome. Um, 
this is it. This is a weird diagram. Basically, the idea is that every circle is supposed to be the universe at a different point in time. And so we're measuring back from the Big Bang to the present day, you know, when the Planck satellite exists over here. So we have quantum fluctuation um, that apparently starts the Big Bang. And then there is, you know, all of the forces that fall away from each other as they freeze out all of the different matter that gets formed, first the quarks, then the leptons, then atomic nuclei, and finally atoms. Once atoms are made, then finally um, the photons, the radiation in the early universe can decouple. And that afterglow of the Big Bang is what we call the cosmic microwave background radiation. Um, after that, so um, I guess I should say, the quantum fluctuation bit is right here, right? And so this very early part is supposed to be inflation, right? Not to scale. You cannot represent 10 to the 50 on a, on a piece of paper or on a screen. All right, so anyway, after we have the CMB, we have atoms. They've already started to cluster together around little dense regions of dark matter. And so those are on the order, on the size order of um, globular clusters or dwarf galaxies. And as they um, continue to uh, kind of collapse under their gravity in small, you know, high density regions, then those will form stars. So we're forming globular clusters, we're forming stars in dwarf galaxies, and then the rest of the evolution of galaxies happens as those dwarf galaxies merge and form larger galaxies um, and star formation continues. Basically, most of the universe's existence is this whole galactic dance of, of just galaxy evolution. Um, you know, stars form, planets form around the stars, stars die, the whole cycle just continues, you know, recycling material and here we are today in our time of dark energy accelerated expansion. Um, don't ask me how long this era will go on, but there's still plenty of time for galaxies to continue interacting, for stars to form, for stars to blow up. Um, and eventually, several things we know are going to happen. First of all, the Milky Way and Andromeda are on a crash course, right? So eventually they're going to merge. Um, the rest of the galaxies that are in our local group are also going to merge with each other. Entire galaxy clusters will eventually merge as well. And so over time, matter is going to become even more and more clumped up than it is now. Um, far, far in the future, we're going to have converted all the gas into stars, and then all the stars into stellar remnants, such as white dwarfs or black holes, um, or neutron stars, I guess. And so eventually all of the gas and dust that's currently out there will be locked up into stellar remnants. Um, the white dwarfs and neutron stars will continue to glow for a while, but not forever. Eventually they'll become essentially just dead husks made of mostly carbon and helium. Um, and at that point, um, maybe they'll continue to merge together if they're close enough in space and they can gravitationally attract together they might merge and form probably mostly black holes. Eventually those black holes evaporate through a process related to Hawking radiation. And so you will eventually lose the black holes far, far in the future. Um, space meanwhile has been expanding and accelerating in its expansion. So any of the galaxies, even, you know, they're long dead, they're dark, but they're also too far away from us. And the light is redshifted so far that we can't detect it from even our nearby galaxy clusters. So our observable universe is closing in on us as the universe goes on and on. So eventually we are basically just, uh, and by we, I mean the matter in earth that's hopefully still either in the dead husk of the sun or at least in our local cluster, um, have no contact with the next nearby clusters. Everything goes dark and everything is far away. The temperature drops, the density drops. That's it. I hope it's not too bleak. I kind of like would prefer if it was a higher density universe and then it would collapse in on itself and then it could be born again. But alas, that does not appear to be the universe that we live in. 
What about white holes? So that is a good question. If you want to do your project on white holes, I would say go for it. This is like a theoretical idea that's essentially the opposite of black holes, and it could be related to how universes form. So that's my overview of what's most likely going to happen. The crash course video goes in and it gives you actual numbers for these things, and they're all really big numbers. So be sure to check that out if you love having your mind blown. <laughs>